Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today I want to talk about the top four mage builds in PvE for New World. So to start us off, we of course have Ancients, Angry Earth, Corrupted, and of course Lost as well. These are going to be the four dungeon types we're going to focus in on today, and give you the best builds for each and every single dungeon. So, if you guys didn't know as well, we do stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye. You can see here Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I do want to say as well is typically you're going to run a melee build if you're looking for high mutated dungeons and a lot of DPS. But I do expect Mage to get a slight buff in the idea that it is not really that strong right now in PvE. So getting this gear now could be very, very cheap and a great idea at the moment. So Void Gauntlet is going to be our first build, Void Gauntlet and Ice Gauntlet. We're going to take the Void Blade, Petrifying Scream, and of course Oblivion on the Void Gauntlet. And then when we get to the Ice Gauntlet, we're going to take Entomb, Ice Shower, and Ice Storm. This is going to give us a ton of viability when it comes to damage, as well as sustain and really survivability altogether. The one thing we're going to note is Void Gauntlet wise, you're going to want a tier 2 Topaz. This is going to make sure you're doing the most amount of damage with that Void Gauntlet you can to these ancient mobs. Also, when you get to the Ice Gauntlet gem, you're going to want the Opal. The Opal is going to give you 15% more damage while your stamina is not full, and it's overall going to help you the most you can possibly get. Of course, this is for an ancient, uh, ancient dungeon, so you are going to take Ancient Bane in this case. Do remember, you want to switch this Bane type depending on what dungeon you're in, of course. And when it comes to the weapon perks on the Void Gauntlet, Ancient Bane and Enchanted is going to be your best in slot. If you can't get Ancient Bane and Enchanted, you can also go for Ancient Bane and Vicious, by the way. So let's jump over to the Ice Gauntlet. Here we have Ancient Bane again, of course. And your second weapon perk is actually going to be pretty big. It's going to be Refreshing Move. Basically going to give you non-stop cooldown reduction with your light and heavy attacks reducing your active weapon cooldowns by 2.9%. And then we get to the gear perks. So first off, Voracious Blade is going to be huge. While below the 50% health, Successful Void Blade hits self-heal for 31%. Of the damage done another very big one to take armor perk wise is unending thaw it's going to give you more damage on your ice storm and you're going to have frost effects remaining on enemies for two seconds afterwards next up petrifying scream a huge one to grab as well because on successful hit it's going to inflict disease and limit their healing nullifying oblivion as well is going to limit duration buffs from enemies within its radius and oblivion actually recharges 9.8 percent faster as well Healing Tomb, of course, going to give you a little bit of health after your Entomb ends. And next up, we have Deadly Frost. When the Frigid Shower's upgrade is active, Ice Shower's Frostbite debuff will deal 8% weapon damage per second to affected enemies. Ice Shower cooldown also reduced by 9.8%. Here are the attributes you're going to want to go, depending on your skill level as well, and how much you're dying, etc. Here we also have the chart that shows you how strong Angry Earth is. Ancients, Corrupted, and Lost are versus certain types. So if you're going for the Angry Earth, that's really the only time you're going to see a viability toward the Fire Staff. And that's exactly what we're touching on now, is Angry Earth. So the Fire Staff and the Void Gauntlet is one of the most viable PvE mage builds out there when it comes to Angry Earth. You can see here the Fire Staff abilities we're going to take going to be Fireball, Pillar of Fire, Incinerate, of course, are going to give us the most amount of damage we can possibly find. And then Void Gauntlet as well is going to be Void Blade, Petrifying Scream, and Oblivion yet again. This is going to give us a lot of different viability and utility, as well as a nice secondary to our Fire Staff. Here we're going to see the Opal, Cut Pristine Opal that is, we're going to take on our Fire Staff. That's going to give us a lot of extra damage while we're not at full stamina. And then on the Void Gauntlet, we're going to take the Tier 2 Cut Flawed Ruby as our gem. Now we have our, of course, Anger Earthbane. This is going to be our first weapon perk on both weapons. We're going to need the Anger Earthbane to do 15% more damage to the Angry Earth. We're also going to take Enchanted on both our Fire Staff and our Void Gauntlet. You can switch in Vicious, though. Again, Vicious is very, very solid for both as well if you can't get that Enchanted. Now we have Keenly Empowered. Keenly Empowered is a solid option for the Fire Staff as well as you can take Attunement if you really want to. So, now we have our gear or armor perks. Armor perk-wise, Voracious Blade is going to be another one that you're going to want to grab. It's going to give you, like I said, a lot of utility, a lot of self-healing. It's also just going to help you overall survive more. So, Nullifying Oblivion, another great utility option for you. 
A nullifying Oblivion removes that limited duration buffs from enemies within its radius, and Oblivion, of course, getting that faster recharge rate. Petrifying Scream, of course, another big one to take on successful hit. Petrifying Scream inflicting that disease and reducing the target's healing by 29% for eight seconds. Going to be very nice to have on some of the different kind of mobs you find in the Angry Earth Dungeon as well, if you are clearing the entire thing. Here we have the Empowering Fireball, which Fireball Impact deals 32% additional damage, which is nice to see, but you know, you're not going to have a majority of your damage come from just the Fireball, so we have to take Refreshing Pillar of Fire as well. Refreshing Pillar of Fire is going to give us the reduction of the ability by 17%, per enemy hit with the max hits of two. So we're going to see about 34% if you are able to hit every time of a cooldown reduction, which is nice. Stable Incinerate is not as important, but if you want to grab it, you definitely can. Here are the attributes if you're a beginner, in intermediate, or a pro. Of course, definitely take whatever keeps you alive the most, but deals you the most damage. Kind of find that nice sweet spot and go for it. So the next build that we're going to take a look at is going to be, of course, the Corrupted build. It's going to be the Void Gauntlet Ice Gauntlet. This is going to be a build that a lot of people are going to be running because you can go the Void Blade, Petrifying Scream again, and Oblivion, which a lot of Void Gauntlet users are finding out that Mage PvE, Void Gauntlet's probably one of the best. Ice Gauntlet is a secondary, though, as we do see a lot of utility and damage from the Ice Spike, Ice Shower, and Ice Storm. And we're going to also take the, of course, gems-wise again, we're going to take the Tier 2 Sapphire. When it comes to Corrupted Dungeon, the Tier 2 Sapphire is going to be the best damage for us, as Tier 2 Sapphire is going to be the best damage, not just for our Void Gauntlet this time, but also our Ice Gauntlet. Now we're jumping into, of course, the Corrupted Bane. 15% damage to the Corrupted is going to be huge for us. The Bane type is going to be very important, so always take the correct Bane. This is going to be the Corrupted build of today's top four, so make sure in this scenario to take the Corrupted Bane. So our weapon perk-wise, we're going to want the Enchanted again on the Void Gauntlet. Enchanted is going to be a very, very nice buff to our straight-up light and heavy attacks, dealing 9.8% more damage. And of course, you're going to want the Refreshing Move like before. With your Ice Gauntlet, you're going to want uptime on all of your abilities as much as possible. Now, I'm just going to talk you guys through the armor perks this time around while they come up on your screen because I have some notes that I want to mention about this build when going into these corrupted areas. So, Voracious Blade is an armor perk you're going to want. Petrifying Scream, Nullifying Oblivion, Unending Thaw, Iced Refresh, Deadly Frost in that order. But when we talk about the notes, Sustain and Support, that is going to be your role in your dungeon group. You should be keeping Oblivion up 100% of the time. Also, Void Gauntlet is unmatched for solo survivability unless you get one shot, so make sure to not get hit by the big, big abilities. Use Ice Storm on those clumps of mobs. It applies a 10% damage increase versus mobs below half HP, and it's going to help you and your team do so, so much damage. So this build is actually very viable, like I said, in Corrupted Dungeons. So now let's take a look at some of the attributes that you're going to want to take. Of course, if you're doing really well and you're not dying, lower your constitution, continue to try to put as much damage out as possible with higher intelligence attributes. But I do want to say, guys, as well, if you are running this build, there only is going to be one difference between the corrupted build we just talked about and the lost, and it's going to be the gems. So here you can see we have the cut pristine opal, and this is going to be your gem for the ice gauntlet, and of course the aquamarine for the void gauntlet. I do want to say as well, if you are playing this in a Lost Dungeon, the Ice Gauntlet DPS spam rotation is Storm, Spike, Shower, Auto Attack for Refreshing Move, and Repeat. Void Gauntlet is only used for Disease and Oblivion, so making sure to alternate Oblivion cooldowns with your healer. And one thing to note is Ice Gauntlet can actually compete with Hatchet and Warhammer, but it's less consistent and a lot more effort. A good build for fun, but there's a high skill in Luck Ceiling to landing your Mighty Spikes. For that refresh, for those high damage numbers, it's going to be a build that's a lot of fun for Lost, and I would suggest trying it out if you are a mage user. So there are a lot of good information here at the end of this video as well. So you can see here, if you want to pause during any of this, definitely do so. We have important consumables up next with coatings, incense, honing stones, gemstone dust, oak flesh balm, ward potions, and of course, make sure to have trophies. Trophies, minor trophies specifically, are very, very cheap. Basic, very cheap as well. Major, a little bit more expensive, but they're worth getting. They're going to buff up your damage quite a bit when it comes to these dungeons. And if you want to do mutated dungeons, you need trophies. So take advantage of this, guys. Jump in, and hopefully you have fun with some of these mage builds. And if you guys don't remember, we do stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So make sure to follow me there, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.